Association. We work um, Sorry, I'm just trying. We, uh, we're a national organisation. At a, a national level, we organise uh, canal camps and uh, a, a lot of the documentation involved. London Work is one of a number of um, what we call travelling groups. And these travelling groups, uh, they're travelling in as they work, they, they don't work on one specific project, they work all over the country on different, with, uh, different canal societies. Um, so we're, fa we're fairly autonomous from the main group, but we rely on the, uh, the national organisation for, for, for things like uh, safety, uh, safety standards, uh, plants, uh, te technical standards, insurance, training, and we organise and we have a, a national magazine called Navis, which keeps us in touch with each other. Um, as a as a group, we like I say we we work. We, we, we decide ourselves where we're going. Uh, we meet twice a year. We organise where we're going to go and who, which one of, one of us is going to lead it. So we have a number of leaders. We don't have one person running every every um, every dig. As you say, we have no formal structure. Which like I say, we, although I'm technically the chairman, we we, uh, we as I say we run as a bit of a, as, as a committee. We go we go away about fourteen times a year. We don't tend to do so much in the summer because people are going away on canal camps or on their own holidays. And um, we mainly work in uh, in the south and the Midlands, and occasion and occasionally a bit further. Uh, the, the, most of the, most of the pictures I'm going to show you tonight are um, of our, our fairly our, our, from the last few years. We, we've been around a long time. We've worked on some major restorations, but uh, as you say, this, these are mainly last couple of years and I've organized it by topic rather than by canal so the first topic I was I wanted to go to because often it's the first thing you'd, uh, you have to do as a to restore a canal is actually find it and that, this can vary from a, a, a jungle to a dip in a field to, uh, to anything really but um, but this is a, a typical scene this is on the uh, Shrewsbury Newport Canal up near Ruffington and we've we've gone in here. We we're one of the first groups in. We said we've literally got to find the canal. First thing to do is create a, a walkway down it, then try and clear out the canal. And hopefully, at some point, it will start. It will start to look like this. This is the um, Shropshire tugboat canals at uh, at the Iron Bridge Gorge Museum in Shropshire. Again, this is a uh, part of a rather big uh, scrub bash we had a couple of years ago. We, we use a, a number of techniques. It's, it's mainly manual work, but we have a uh, we have a number of people who are trained up on use of chainsaws. They have their own little their own little group. They, they work to their own. They, they work to very high safety standards and qualifications. And uh, so, whenever we use chainsaws, we have to have a well, we have, you know, individual method method statements and risk assessments. Another very useful tool we use is the uh, turf winch, which is a manual winch for we can either use for dragging. Tree, tree stumps out or dragging dragging timber out of the canal these vary from about a ton to about a five ton uh, capacity but sometimes we have to go back to the old-fashioned methods this is a uh, oh, that last that last picture was on the Wilson Burks canal this is on the uh, Thames and Seven canal that's uh, near the M5 one of the troubles with a, a turf winch, you've got to you've got to find somewhere to attach it, and obviously this in this place we didn't have anywhere to attach it, so went back to the old methods. Again, going back to the Shrewsbury Newport at Uffington, uh, after a day or so, that's what it looks like. And of course, the most important tool we see there is the um, is the T point. We don't operate without a T brakes, and uh, the uh, Burko is our, our most useful bit of kit. Uh, this is another not so heavy scrub bash, but this this one was unusual. Again, we're back on the uh, Shrewsbury Newport Canal. This is um, Berwick Wharf, and it was actually owned by the National Trust. And the National Trust were very wary about having uh, canal volunteers in because they, they didn't know what kind of work we did. So uh, we had a very supervised weekend with the uh, National Trust archaeologists and us working together, and they were very very pleased with what we did. And uh, I think. Uh, the National Trust are going to be a new, a new, a new client of ours, or a new. Certainly, uh, they'll be welcoming us, welcoming us back. 
this this wharf hadn't been exposed in well, many well, hundreds of decades of years. Sometimes the canal we go to is um, not so derelict, it's still in water. This is the Thames and Seven at uh, Whitminster near the M5 at the western end of the canal, of the Stroud Water Navigation, sorry. And we're, we're having to work off boats, again, with fairly high safety standards. We're using ropes, uh, life jackets, and uh, having a lot of fun. Again, another. this is another clearance we did down on the um, Thames and Motorway Canal, one of our more local canals. We haven't been down there very often because they don't have any major projects for us at the moment, but uh, they certainly needed to clear their canal and it, it was very heavily wooded. But it's a, it's a bit of a long-term project, but we enjoy going down there if we get to stay, stay by the sea. Another clearance we've done, this is on the um, Hereford and Gloucester Canal, a place called Yarkill, just outside Hereford. Again, we, um, we, um, we used to go to the Hereford and Gloucester a lot. We haven't been there uh, much for the last few years through a bit of a lack of a project to do down there, but we've always enjoyed it. It's uh, nice to work out in the middle of, in the countryside. But as you say, uh, looking forward to going back. Another canal we enjoy going to, but um, it's the Somerset Coal Canal. This is at the very, very far end of the Coal Canal, uh, Bolton Basin. The, um, the canal actually runs to the left of the, left of the um, picture. And what we're working to on the right is, an old, is the old um, Canal Basin, which again, hadn't, been, hadn't seen the light of day for many decades. Again, well, this is this one. This one. This is the Utoxeter Canal at uh, Alton. The uh, just to the left here is uh, Alton Towers. We we were working. Often we got there to uh, the company screams of the people on the uh, roller coasters. But this this is a bit of a change between a a wet canal and a dry canal, uh, and a uh, well, not so wet canal. This is a bit further up the Utoxeter Canal. What we're doing here, we're actually trying to find the lock. This is a Jackson's Jackson's Wood Lock. And one thing about Utoxeter Canal, there's there's not much of it left structural wise, so it is, it's certainly it's a matter of find you know, find where the lock is. Or you think the lock is, then then dig it out. One thing we enjoy about um, scrub bashing is uh, a very if we do it in the winter, it's fairly short days, and we have big bonfires. And uh, at the end of the day, we can all have a uh, we can all have a, a sit around a bonfire. The lady on the right there is, is toasting marshmallows, so which, are, which is uh, always an enjoyment. Um, once you found your canal, you've got, you need we, when you've got a project to rebuild, we we often have to find a way to get to the canal. So often these locks are in the middle of nowhere, middle of fields. This is and this is part of a project we've done on the way in Aran Canal down near Bramley, where we had to actually put a, a temporary access road in down to the canal. Otherwise, um, it, would have soon, it would have soon gone to mud if we hadn't done. And here's another, um, this is a, a Thames and Seven Canal, Isy, which we'll come on to in a minute, where we've had to actually create a road onto the site by uh, filling in a ditch, but leaving, uh, putting in a, a pipe for, uh, to, keep, to maintain the uh, stream. I mentioned Isley Lock because uh, some of you will have seen this before, but uh, Isley Lock was is an interesting one because it's, it's one of the few locks we actually saw through from dereliction right through to completion. It's on the Thames and Seven, on the a bit in the middle of the, you know, basically in the middle of the Thames and Seven, on the eastern end. So it's not going to see a boat for a few years, but that's what it was like when we first found it. It doesn't look too bad condition, but that, that brickwork there, you can see the trees growing out of it, and that. That front brickwork is not actually attached to the um, structure behind it, so it was a it was a very rotten. You'll often find on canals like this the um, where the where there's water in the bottom of the lock, the actual brickwork has been maintained fairly well, but where, where the brickwork's been exposed to the elements for decades or hundreds of years, it is fairly rotten. So, so first thing we did was uh, start to. We, we work we tend to start work at the top and the bottom the top wing walls and the bottom wing walls so that we can create dams and uh, be able to pump out and um, start work on the, the chambers themselves so here we are starting to demolish the top wing walls you can see the excavator there is taking the coping stones off 
uh, at the bottom we created a dam that we can pump out below the lock in the lock chamber and unfortunately uh, the top the top sort of had a rather enormous tree growing out of it so we had to um, use uh, take that out using the tip turf for winches but uh, as you can see in the in doing that it's pretty well destroyed the uh, top sill we'll come back to that you can see the people behind us taking out the um, gate recess and back down to the bottom there's a rare picture of me using an excavator and you say we're taking out the um, the bottom wing walls taking off the coping stones and and demolishing the walls because they were fairly rotten Sorry, we're jumping up a bad bit here now. We're back up to the top. We're rebuilding the top wing walls. Luckily, the, um, the canal above the lock was was uh, was was dry, so we we didn't have to create a dam at the top. But back at the bottom, you can see we've rebuilt the um, bottom wing walls, and we're just putting the coping stones back on there. And as part of rebuilding the bottom wing walls, we put the uh, uh, stop plank gate recesses in, so that uh, once they were complete, we can put the stop planks in, and which enable us to uh, pump out the lock chamber itself, and we can start working on the lock chamber. So then you can see the uh, the state of the lock chamber. That's just by basically raking it and a very fine demolition. But the uh, the next job was to do. Uh, Put a scaffold up and to re remove the, the front face of brickwork and go back to good bricks. There's, there's various methods of uh, rebuilding lock walls and we'll come on to that a bit later but what we're here doing here the intention is to clean off the bricks, uh, take out all the rotten ones and re-bond re a new wall into the old into the old good bricks. It was quite interesting we actually found some old the old timber ties that uh, used to tie the um, front face back to the um, the bank behind. And that's not bad condition. That that piece of timber is probably two hundred years old, and it was still well. It was a bit flaky, but it was still dry. Uh, you saw us taking out the um, <coughs> excuse me the the tree out of the top sill a bit earlier on. So uh, as part as part of the rebuilding works, we've we're, we're reconcreting the. Um, well, we're putting the top sill back in in more modern materials, as in reinforced concrete. You can see now we've we've started rebuilding the chamber wall. Actually, the, so as as I said before, the um, the brickwork below water level is still in fairly good condition, so we just we built straight off that. And we're putting a new face in, and so it will get tied back to the existing brickwork. And there's a rare, another rare picture of me actually laying bricks. I'm, I'm not the most skillful like bricklayer, so I, I'm more useful doing the labouring type work. But you can see, you can see on here where, where we, like I say, say we're tying the brick, we're tying the brickwork into the old brickwork, the new brickwork into the old brickwork. And you can see now we've we've rebuilt the uh, chain wall wall, and we're starting back. We're starting on the. Uh, the gate recesses and the wall next to it. So we've we rolled back the coping stones, and we're demolishing the um, the old the, the rotten brickwork, and uh, and keying it in. And then once we've demolished it and cleaned it, we've started we're we re we're rebuilding it here. Obviously a bit of a wet day. We put the tarp hoardings up. Once we've got the brickwork up, we put the coping stones back on. You can see there with the uh, with the stones back on. Always fun. It's always fun moving coping stones. They're, they're very heavy, but they can be done with the levers. And that's a, a picture of the lock as we left it. Obviously, we don't put we don't put gates. Well, the gates aren't put in until the canal's ready to use. Otherwise, they they just dry out. But unfortunately, it'll be, it'll be I think it'll be a few years before we, we see this lock used. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I said there's, there's various other ways of uh, doing other types of work we do on locks. This is um, a visit we did to the, on the uh, Balaam lock on a river Gipping, where the actual floor of the um, the lock had failed because of the, there were springs underneath it. So uh, 
we've actually dug out the old floor and what we're doing here now we're putting blind concrete blinding down for the new concrete base you can see at the bottom there's a pump there because um as you say there was there was a there were springs here and as part of the work we're putting in a network of drainage underneath the slab so that the in future the the springs won't force the uh, the lock up again one of the other jobs you have to do when we're restoring lock often is to uh, rebuild the by washes to take the water past the lock well, you know, it, so that um, any water coming down during lock restoration will go around the lock rather than through it and obviously in when it's when lock's finished it's a it will become the proper by wash this is a by wash we did on the uh, modern brett canal down by the m4 so one of our few uh, ex few uh, welsh exploit ex exploits this is another lock we've done it um, on the Wilts and Burks Canal at uh, seven locks near near Lynham. So you can see here the um, the the lock itself had pretty well disappeared. So what we've done here, we're going to put a reinforced concrete behind the brickwork, and in this case, we've put a, a block wall up to to act as the concrete former. Still on the Wilts and Burks Canal. This is a summit lock. And so we're doing roughly the same thing, but instead of a block wall behind, we're putting up uh, temporary steel formers to to take the uh, concrete back into the uh, to the brickwork. <laughs> this is another sad sad lock. This is a uh, lock fifteen on the Grantham Canal at Walsfort. The um, it was so rotten they had to take they basically just took took that, took everything away. So we had a weekend up there, except except by the at the end, you know, the um, the chamber ends so we were one of the first people in there to start start on rebuilding the walls and over the last couple of years the Grantham Canal Society local groups and there were canal camps have, um, have rebuilt this lock again using, using the reef use um, with a reinforced concrete at the back for uh, <coughs> excuse me this is another one we've spent uh, work well, not only where we we rebuilt it, we were the project managers as well. This is a Inglesham lock on the Thames and Seven Canal. This uh, Inglesham is the, is the first lock on the um, Thames and Seven. So you've got the River Thames just be behind the uh, Roundhouse and the bridge there. Again, we had certainly on this side we had to take the, uh, the 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 complete structure back. So and what we did here, we built a, a new um, front face. Then filled up the back with a uh, kind of concrete blocks or concrete. And it's always good to see a, a lock through to completion. This is us um, a bit later on. You can see the that wall on the left has been completed. Brickworks up, coping stones are on, and we're just clearing out. And that's what it looks like today. As you can see, it's a, hopefully the, we, might, we might see some boats here in the not, not too distant future if they can sort out the land ownership above the lock. This is just a few more uh, locks. And once we'd finished Izzy Lock, we worked down to we walked went down the um, the, the Thames and Seven down towards Stroud, where they they'd run out of money on the Phase One A restoration. So there's a, a lot more volunteer input had gone into than it, as it had originally been planned. This is quite a difficult lock. This is Bowbridge Lock, just outside Stroud. The um, the lock on the right was certainly difficult because you can see there's a there's a retaining wall only a few feet away behind it. And the uh, buildings on top of that, but this is a kind of typical. This is a, a typical restoration we did on the Thames and Seven uh, down towards Stroud. Another another Thames, another Thames and Seven lock. This is a Goth sorted lock at Broomscombe. As as before, one of the first things we do is re um, restore the top wing walls and the and the gate and the uh, stock plant groove, so we can uh, stop it off to um, rebuild the lock. And uh, we've we've pretty well finished all the locks down to Stroud, but uh, if you walk up the Golden Valley, there's still many many locks to do. So I think there's a, I think this restoration will see me out. as probably had a few other people as well. And there's a, a there's another more not so typical um, lock down on the uh, Somerset Coal Canal at Coombs Hay. Coombe Hay. No particular plans to restore these locks at the moment, but I just I just like that picture. You can see these are these are stone these are stone locks rather than brickwork locks. 
Um, we've also worked on a few new locks. There's been, there's been a number of canals over the years where the canal dis disappeared, had to be diverted, or the canal sank through um, mining subsidence. And one of the locks we've worked on um, over the years is Staveley Lock on the Chesterfield Canal, where the, um, the canal levels have, have been completely distorted by mining subsidence. This, this bit of concrete here was put in by contractors. The idea was the contractors built the bit main structure and then the volunteers came along and finished the lock. That funny structure at the bottom of the lock, at the far end is the actual the lock tail bridge. And uh, we came back a year or two later and we, um, we finished around it. The, the lock's been uh, finished, gates on, and they've had boats through here on various canal festivals. And as I said, it's a stable, it certainly is a, a, a winner. We worked on a few bridges as well. Well, sometimes we'll go to a we'll go to a bridge, or go to a, and I say, oh, we'll restore it, and all it needs is a bit of pointing. Actually, this is uh, the uh, Shrewsbury Canal, <coughs> excuse me, the Shrewsbury Newport Canal at Forton, and I say, uh, hopefully, all it needs is a bit of a bit of pointing and a few bricks taken out and reset. You can see the old uh, bridge guards there with the rope marks on them, all still there. Other places we go to, it's not so much as pointing them up, as actually finding them. This is uh, Stepping Stones Bridge on the Wilson Burks Canal. We were one of the first people in there, a bit of an, archaeology, bit of an archaeological expedition to find out where the canals, where the bridge was, what state it was in. Over the years, the local, again, the locals and uh, Werg and have been in there. This is a year or two later. We've uh, they put the uh, former cup, putting the bricks in to form the arch. Then a year or so later, again, we went back in and put the coping stones on it. So it's, uh, again, another success is, is a view from the canal itself. Now you can put, you compare that with um, two two slides again. There's, a, there's an awful lot of work gone into that bridge. <coughs> there's a similar bridge being built on the Thames and Seven Canal. That's uh, Waymore Bridge, which is not too far away. Again, it's a uh, Taken a bit longer than it should have done, but it's uh, it's there now. And there's actually vehicles running over this this bridge. Another, another one of our favourite bridges, but we're back on the um, Way and Aaron Canal now, but down at Dunsfold Aerodrome. And if you know Dunsfold, it's where the uh, Top Gear is filmed and the old uh, old cars racing around the airfield there. Um, when the canal was abandoned, there was a new road built. The old what, they built a new access road onto the um, onto the airfield and uh, by, by filling it in and, and completely blocking the canal and obviously um, that's no good if you want to take a boat through so <laughs> again with, it's a bit similar to the Chesterfield Canal what the local canal society organized a contractor to come in do the foundations and the bridge deck to um, and got traffic um, moving uh, and got traffic moving onto the new bridge and then the volunteers came in we did all the uh, bridge abutments, all the all the um, paving, the, and all the services, and some of the land and the landscaping. So, within not too short, long a distance after, time after um, starting this bridge, it now looks like this, which um, is an amazing project. The Wayne Aaron, uh, they are. They are the masters at building structures and, ra and raising money for and building structures. So they've got another two of these for us to build. Uh, uh, well, from, probably from this year or next year, when we're whenever we're allowed to go back canal restoring. Another bridge on the um, Way and Aaron. They've got they they the Way and Aaron Canal Society inherited a section about a kilometre of canal, a place called uh, Burtley, which is just outside Bramley. And again, there was a couple of existing cross, uh, farm crossings that had to be uh, got rid of. And the way to get rid of them was put new, to put new bridges in. So the, the intention is, well, they, they're putting in two new lift bridges here. The, the uh, temporary road track you saw earlier on, well, that, that was to um, feed this, this project. Like I said, we, we had a couple of, couple of digs down there, but uh, these, the way now projects go so fast. By the, time, by the time we want to go back, it's, it's finished. So this is the um, bridge as it is now. There's, um, I'm not sure if the new deck's gone in yet, but as soon as the new deck and railings have gone in, they'll be able to take out the uh, existing farm crossings and 
open up another section for navigation. <laughs> another bridge we spent a lot of time on in the last few couple of years is a uh, Lock Bridge One on the Buckingham Canal, which is a branch off the uh, Grand Union Canal at Cosgrove. Again, when we first went there, it was, it was a it was more of an archaeological dig than a restoration project, but um, I think we were about the second or third dig in there. The intention was to rebuild this, a bit like Stepping Stones Bridge, to rebuild this as a traditional arch bridge, but for some reason, the um, I, I'm sure I don't I don't know. It was decided to, to rebuild part of the arch, but put a new flat deck in. So uh, this is the original arch. And we, one of the jobs for this weekend is put the decking in for it, put the flooring in the canal to, to enable us to reconstruct the bridge. Went back there a, a couple of months later and you can see the, the, the crowd on the right are, are actually put, laying a couple of thousand bricks we did in a weekend to, uh, for one of the new abutments for the new flat deck bridge. You can see, on, if you look on the other side, you can see the, uh, the other abutment has been started. Um, we haven't been back. We were due back to. We were due to go back here a few weeks ago, but obviously that didn't happen. But I believe now the um, the locals have finished the bridge deck. They've took the railings in, and so the bridge is not far off finished. Um, the way now, and I've always kept us busy. Um, we're back down at um, Allfold again near the um, Compasses Bridge you saw earlier on. The uh, as they were going to open up quite a long section of canal here, they thought they'd better have a. Uh, a way of getting boats onto it so uh, they organised to build a slipway and a couple of years ago we built the access down there excuse me and then we went back a while again later and helped them build the uh, foundations for the slipway so you can see it gets a bit muddy down there and as part of the slipway we're also putting in a, a landing stage that's in the canal there Went back there a few months later, you can see they've done an amazing amount of work. So we did a bit of finishing uh, brickwork down the, down the top of the slipway. And we thought we'd launch a boat, just to be, just to be different. We don't, we, don't often see the boat, we don't often see boats on canals we're working on, so it was, a, it was quite, a, quite a weekend. Then obviously this was supposed to be in the location for the um, Idaho National Trail Boat Rally last weekend, but obviously for obvious reasons it didn't happen. So uh, it's been postponed till next year so hopefully people will go down here next year and see trail boats coming down our slipway. Um, obviously you're building a canal you need to build a towpath. We're getting quite, we're getting quite expert at um, these projects now. This is a, a bit of wild towpath construction we're doing. It's, uh, on, back, we're back at, on the Utoxida Canal at Alton. The uh, pictures you saw earlier on we um, we were clearing out the canal bed and now we're uh, gone back a year or so later and we're, we're clearing out the um, top for a to to um, create a, w a walkway at the moment the walkway is to the right on along an old, an old railway line the intention is to move people off the railway line and back onto the canal towpath and it's, it's it's a project that's going very well this is um, a bit of towpath work up at the uh, Cromford canal you, you might you might say actually they're not working on towpath well they work on the offside but to um to repair the towpath wall there we had to uh, repair the offside wall and what's happened since the um the towpath has been temporarily moved over to the offside to allow the um to allow work to commence on, on, on rebuilding the uh, the towpath side wall i'm not sure if it started yet but hopefully it's a project we'll be going back to so this is the Cromford Canal at uh, Ambergate. This is uh, Cromford Canal is about as far north as we go. Um, as I say for a, week, for a weekend, we don't want to travel more than a couple of hours. But as I said earlier, but um, I don't think I mentioned earlier on. But although we call ourselves London Water Recovery Group, and um, our members come from all over the country, we have, if we have a dig, we've got people coming down from coming up from Devon, from the south coast, London. Uh, Midlands, Leicestershire. So, what's what's a long distance travel dig to uh, us Londoners? It's probably not a long distance dig for our people in the Midlands. This is one of our more local canals to London. This is the um, uh, Chelmer and Blackwater navigation. It's a 
it's Paper Mill Lock, which is about halfway along the Chalmers Blackwater. As you may know, the Chalmers Blackwater is actually uh, managed by the uh, IWA or an IWA subsidiary. So it's, it's um, <coughs> excuse me. It's one of our it's one of our favourite locations, as it's uh, as you say, it's only an hour's drive from London. Well, an hour's drive from London, so it's a it's a nice one to do during the winter. And here, what we're doing here, we're re we're rebuilding the towpath from the lock down to the public car park, and rebuilding the fencing as well. If you ever get the chance to go down there, it's Paper Mill Lock. There's a very nice there's a very nice tea room there, and there's, there's some beautiful walks around that part of the country. And it's and it's a working canal. Back up to the Midlands, we're working now. We're working on the uh, Litchfield Canal, a place called Summerhill. And as you can see, it's, it wasn't so much as uh, repairing a towpath as completely recreating one. The, it'll be coming very, 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 very overgrown. So uh, David is on the excavator clearing out. Then the next team coming along with the uh, timber railings and the chippings and the and the whacker plates to create the towpath. And, uh, if anyone knows this area, it's, it's, it's not far from the um, the aqueduct that was put over the M6 toll motorway. And you can see we're we're actually putting the towpath in along up, up to the aqueduct. And I believe the, the idea is they're going to put um, stack, uh, <coughs> excuse me, steps in up to the aqueduct to create a walkway across along the, along the line of the canal. Um, I'll put these in just as we don't actually work on tunnels, but we, we occasionally work next to them. This is a again back to one of our favourite canals, the show has been Newport Canal. This is a Berwick Tunnel. This is the uh, South End. Uh, that's the North End. We've done we've done a lot of work, although we haven't actually worked on the tunnel, we've done a lot of uh, clearance here. And since that photograph's taken, we've kind of demolished and apart rebuilt the um, Lengsman's cottage on the right there and we've landscaped all around the top. But, uh, I suppose, uh, I don't know what state the tunnel's in but uh, it's, 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 a bit, it's a bit beyond even our expertise to, re to restore a tunnel. Obviously um, when you restore your structures, your bridges and your locks you need to uh, get the bed, get the bed and the channel going. Um, this kind of work is generally machine operated plant work so it's not so much it's not so much suited for ga a big gang of people to come along but um, this is a uh, working on the Buckingham arm um, the, the pictures you saw bridge one earlier on it's just that's yeah, just around the corner but so as part of one of the weekends we had there we spent the weekend uh, clearing out the canal bed and and recreating the uh, towpath as you said, it's not something we we normally do. But, um, as part of canal beds and uh, towpaths, you have spillways as well. And this is this is a one-off dig we did many years ago to the um, North Walsham and Dillon Canal. It's the one of the only time I've ever been there, and uh, we were helping to create a spillway. We've not, I must admit, we've not been back since. So uh, I don't, I honestly can't tell what's happening there now. But I know there's there's a, there's a lot of work going on with the lock restoration. Uh, just a bit further around the corner. And no, working on one of the things that causes canals to be abandoned, obviously, is the canal's leak. What we have here, we're back at um, Forton on the Shrewsbury Newport Canal. They inherited a lot of what they call bentonite matting, which is a, a waterproof, which is a layer of. Um, bentonite trapped between two layers of hessian type material so when it gets wet it creates a um waterproof a waterproof layer and uh, hopefully waterproof the um stops the leaks in the canal so you can see what we've done here we've profiled the canal with the excavator we've laid the bentonite matting down we've, we've lapped it and once we've uh, laid it we put the um we put soil back on top to protect it as I said, it's going to be a while before any boats come along here, but um, hopefully when they do, it's, uh, it's going to be waterproof. Oh, it's a leak. Here's another quite interesting project we worked on. Well, very interesting project we worked on. You know. I showed you a picture early on of us um, doing a scrub bash at the uh, 
Iron Bridge Gorge Museum in the, on the old tugboat canal. And one one of the reasons for doing it, they want to they want to put this canal back into water to run a little trip boat along it. But over the um, it's got a history of leaking, and they're not they weren't hundred percent sure why. So we had a, a a small and a select working weekend up here and the object of the weekend was to scrape away the um to try us on top of the uh, canal and work out what the canal was made of or you know so it could work out a way of um waterproof of uh <coughs> sealing the canal and bringing it back up to level so we what happened here they gave us a, a 40 40 meter section of canal from that uh, top plant grooves Back towards the photographer here which we scraped off and then the engineers came in did some uh, ground investigation here's, here's the canals we scraped off in, so the engineers they've done some ground investigation so the engineers have gone off to um, work out how to how they can waterproof this section of canal which might be similar to what we did at Fort and putting uh, timber waterproof layers in where the people are standing on the right we put we did a um, we we dug a trench into the bank so that we can work out actually what the construct you know, the, the construction of the um, canal bank on the offside. It, luckily, we when we did dig it, it was pretty solid clay, so um, I think they were quite pleased there. It's going to be a bit easier than they originally thought. But uh, we await we await to see the report on that, and hopefully we'll be back we'll be back helping them rewater this canal, and in a few years' time we'll, we'll be able to go along there with a trip boat. What? Well, Sometimes we have to do things manually. <laughs> this is back on the Thames of Seven where we're creating a trench to drain a canal. Some people enjoying it more than they should be. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, another big project we did many years ago to enable, in order to um, get the uh, canal back into going, the, uh, we had to agree to, this is on the Montgomery Canal at Frankton, we had to agree to build a nature reserve alongside the canal. So this is this is not a canal. This is a nature reserve alongside it, and, uh, and it's, uh, this is the back of the days, and uh, and all the plastic there is, is again is, is a water is a waterproofing layer to to get the water into the nature reserve. This is quite this is this photograph was taken quite a few years ago now, uh, and I must admit, and uh, you go back there now, and you'd never known it had been man-made. It's it's completely gone back to nature, and uh, and there's boats <laughs> and there's boats going along the canal. Again, it's a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I must, which is a, uh, it all goes to show it's not, it's <coughs> a lot of canal restoration is political. It's, it's negotiating with the, the nature, with the um, historic, the historic people, the, nat the natural England and agreeing a method of restoring a canal that won't, won't destroy it, the uh, nature. <coughs> right. Um, We've had a few unusual digs over the years. We're not actually working in, um, on the canal, but in buildings. Excuse me. My alarm going off. <laughs> this is um, a dig we had many years many years ago at the London Canal Museum. And I don't know if, which is uh, obviously this, where this talk is coming from uh, about tonight. The London Canal Museum is, is based in a building that contains two old 90 foot deep ice wells where um, ice was brought in from Norway in the winter and, st and stored underground and distributed around London. So uh, Water Recovery Group have had a few digs, uh, weekend digs and camps over the years to uh, to dig out the one of the ice wells, which, ice pits which have been filled in. It's, uh, it's not something we do all the time but it was, a, it was a very it was very nice to be working on inside in February. Here's another picture of the uh, one of the ice wells where we, and you can see the hoist up on the ground floor level. It's, it's not very often we have a dig where we actually sleep, the accommodation, we actually sleep in on, on site. So because we were sleeping up on the first floor, we just had to walk downstairs to site. <laughs> Another dig we had fairly recently was a very quickly arranged one. Uh, this is on the Derby Canal at Draycott. The, um, the Derby Canal Society have acquired some old canal side cottages which they're going to come which have been slowly converted into a, 
uh, I think it's going to be some kind of community centre and canal museum. And uh, we had a dig up there, well, it was last year, working on the buildings, uh, creating new openings, forming new uh, new doors and windows. It's a, again, it's not something we normally do, but it's a, we, uh, we certainly enjoyed it. It was, it was, a, it was, it was, it was a dig up we did at very short notice because our, our, our other site had been cancelled. But um, so when you go to a canal museum near on the Derby Canal in a few years' time, you will know that London work helped to build it. We don't just work on abandoned canals; we work on a number of uh, waterways. Um, we're going back. We're back now on the uh, Chelmer and Blackwater Canal, or navigation which is, as, as I said earlier on, is actually managed by the IWA and maintained and run by the IWA. And uh, one of their biggest sources of income is the, um, is the basin at, ha at um, the sea end of the navigation at Haybridge Basin. There's a lot of moorings there, which, which the IWA take the income for. But of course, uh, when you've got moorings, you have to maintain them. So we've, we've had many digs, we've had many, many digs here to improve the uh, mooring facilities and the infrastructure around here. This weekend we're putting our new concrete paths in along the moorings. We had a, it's, not, it's not all about income, it's a lot about um, health and outdoor activities. So this is another back at paper mill lock. We built some uh, canoe stores within a local canoe club. And, uh, back at Haybridge Basin here is where the uh, some of the canal towpath had fallen in. We're rebuilding it with um, clay bags. There's always somebody. There's always somebody who wants to go into the canal to place them. But, uh, the the chap on the left in the blue is uh, Roy Chandler. He's the chairman of uh, Essex Waterways, and he's the, the real driving force behind the uh, you yeah, know the restoration and running of this this waterway. It's it's a lovely part of the country. It's very under, very underused. <coughs> Excuse me. The canal we go to occasionally, well, which, which used to be one of our regulars many, many years ago, is the Basingstoke Canal. As you know, the Basingstoke, we did a lot of work in, on the Basingstoke Canal in the, in the 1980s and right up to its opening in 1991. But it, as with it, within the uh, canal, it's, it needs maintaining, and the, uh, they've got a very healthy canal society there. It does a lot of work, and they asked us to come in one weekend. What we're doing here, we're rebuilding one of the landing stages on the deep cut flight. You can see we've driven the piling in, now we're, now we're backfilling. Because it was originally built with very, very small landing stages, as I found out to my cost when boating up here. We've also done various works on, um, on the lock sides, rebuilding uh, lock quadrants. But it's, uh, the, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful canal. But, uh, it's not one we go to very, very often these days. I'd like to, but I, it's certainly on a, a radar to go back. Another canal we do a lot. Of, well, I say a series of canals. Once a year, Work and London Work organise a um, a clear up on the BCN on the Birmingham Canal Navigations. We go we go all around. Every year we go to a different spot, normally based around the Walsall Wolverhampton area, and the uh, fifty of us spend weekend putting rubbish out the uh, canal. This is a, I can't remember where this is. I think it might be on the snow, on the Dudley number one canal, but um, it, we, we certainly put a lot of rubbish out of it, including the ubiquitous um, shopping trolleys. I think this is a, I think this is the Walsall Canal down at Riders Green by the Asda. We all, it's always a good place for shopping trolleys next to an Asda. And that's kind of typical what we, um, what we might pull out, one of the many boatloads of uh, rubbish we pull out of the canal over the weekend. I think this is down on the Rushall Canal, off the top of my head. Um, getting towards the end now. <laughs> uh, work, doesn't tend, we, work doesn't tend to own a lot of plant now, because um, when I first started digging, this is kind of the standard of plant we had. It was a not not particularly great or this, well, actually this plant had been donated to the canal society for a number of years so most canal societies realize now that you're better off buying good plant or hiring planting for the um for the occasion 
So uh, more often than not, you'll go, you'll go to a, on a dig now, and the local society will have a, a, hide, a nice hide-in modern excavator, which, which can... Um, what, we, what we do have is a, a small fleet of uh, vans and trailers. So during, especially during the summer, we have, when we have a canal camp season, the, 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 all our, all our uh, small, small tools and catering equipment gets transferred from camp to camp. And when, it, when the vans aren't being used on canal camps, we, we, they go to the local groups. We have one which is a, we, we take away at weekends for our London based people. As you can see, it's a nice modern fleet. It's, keeping old plant is not, is not economic. We also have a social side. Um, whenever we go away at weekends, we always meet up in the, well, for those that want to, go to the pub. And in London, we have, um, we have socials between, between digs, where we, where we meet up locally, just, just to all the under-based ones. Every so often we have to uh, maintain our tools. So this is the, uh, the London Work toolkit being painted in a friendly boatyard up on the river, on the river store, on the river lead, sorry. The uh, Work nationally had their own uh, lot of kit as well. And that's kept, they're kept in containers up in um, Warwickshire. And every, every winter we, we, we say so they, they get, we have weekends maintaining the kit because it, it does, it does get used and abused during the year. We help out with fundraising. This is um, the work fudge stall at Canalway Cavalcade. All looking very good in their resplendent in their uniforms. On a, and uh, this this uh, does raise a lot of money. But it's a, it's a lot of work as well. So it, it's um, that's that's work fundraising. We have a magazine called Navis, and every every couple of months we have to get together to. Um, Collate it and post it out. And this this happens at the uh, London Canal Museum. You can see the uh, in the background there is the picture you saw earlier of the uh, the hoists uh, bringing out the material from the uh, pits below. That's where that is now. And occasionally, we make people marry each other. <laughs> this is a very uh, scr scrubbed up bunch of workies at a work wedding up in um, up in Yorkshire. I think that's my three quarters of an hour up. I'd like to well, I'd like to thank you all for um, coming along and getting a feel of what we do in London work. And this is a, a few of the ugly a few of the ugly mugs. I don't know if anyone's got any questions, but you can uh, ask using the Q and A button at the bottom. I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Martin. Right uh, now you can hear me. There's one question, uh, Tim, uh, by Simon Judge, who asks. On tasks like rebuilding a lock, how closely do you try to replicate the original design and construction methods, sizes, etc.? When or how do you take account of modern construction techniques and materials, for example, concrete? Well, my easy cop-out question is that: we, as a travelling group, we don't, we don't design, we don't design, we don't organize, we don't design the work. But um, from my other, other hat on, it's. Um, some locks are actually listed, so you have to, you have to rebuild them as as they were. But most locks we do now, we use modern materials, but in a tradition, so in a but take into account you know what they are. So a lot of locks now we use lime mortar. Where, where there's going to be some movement, we'll use lime mortar. Um, where we can use the original coping stones, stone coping stones, we'll use those. But at the end of the day, you've got to realise these locks are going to last for another hundred years, so they have to be done. With, Fairly st uh, fat, strong materials, but the stock answer is the, lo the locals work out of what they're going to do. But most stocks we do restore, we use modern, we use modern bricks or reclaimed ones where possible. But or, 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 I think I've answered that. One. <laughs> Any more questions? Here we go, another one. Uh, Louise asks, what is your favourite type of canal dig or camp bricklaying? Uh, scrub bashing, love them all. <laughs> um, the, the local groups are very much a, a social group. And if you've got a good bunch of people, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. 
it's 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 the, it's the people that make a dig rather than the work. Obviously, in the winter, we we look, you know, we, we tend to do scrub bashing in the winter because it, you know, the, the fires keep us warm, and we tend to do the construction work in the in the summer and the spring and the autumn. And but it's, I'd I'd say it's it's more to do with the people than the work. Okay, and uh, Nick Grundy asks uh, which canals have you worked on and then subsequently boated on. I have personally boated, worked on the Basingstoke, the Droitwich, and I'm trying to think. I think there's another one. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But the basic, the, the two that really jump out are the Basingstoke and the Droitwich. I, I did a couple of small digs on the Kennet Maven. I can't. They were they weren't particularly um, construction type work. Um, we've done a bit of work years ago on Huddersfield. I've never, I've never boated on Huddersfield. That's it's still one of my list of um, list of uh, places to go boating. But if if you're going to, if you want, if you're going to go on a, a restored canal, the Basin Stoke is a beautiful canal, especially going through deep cut flight. It's it's a stunning, it's a stunning wood canal. Right. I'm also, I'm sorry, I'm just going back. I've also boated through a couple of locks on the um, on the Stradwells navigation as well. On the trip boats, but not not on my boats. So what what often happens? They'll 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 open up a, 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 a canal gradually. So like on the Thames and Seven, there's um they've finished a mile or so, and they'll put a trip boat on it. So I've been on trip boats on bits of canals I've restored, but actually on my boat, the Basingstoke and the Droitwich which are the ones that stand out. Do we have any more questions, anybody? Yes, we've got to the end of the questions that people have typed. So if, oh no, we haven't. I beg your pardon. Uh, there's a couple more. Right, uh, Roger asks, any thoughts of setting up a formal company and tendering for work with Canal River Trust? I, think. I don't think there'll be a company. What we've, what a lot of canal societies have done now, they've, they've, they've had to go for the qualification process to become approved contractors. So, uh, approved organisations so that they can go off and work on their own rather than have to have CRT people monitoring them all the time. So I, I don't, as far as I'm aware, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no plans to set up a company. But you do have to become, if you're work, working on a CRT waterway, you need to be approved to be to work on kind of unsupervised. Okay, and Simon asks, how do you tend to recruit people to the team? Um, I'd like to think it's through publicity and magazines and adverts. The, the biggest, the biggest income, the biggest source of um, uh, new people is friends, friends, and the word canal camps. Uh, the, there's a lot of certainly used to be a lot of uh, youngsters will come on the work the week long canal camps in the summer, uh, come along to do their duty and they get interested and they'll, they'll start coming along to the weekend groups. It doesn't happen as much as it used to, but. But uh, we do find it's mainly friend to friends, things and things like this t tonight. Talking, we find once you, we what we do find once you get them to come along once, you that they either love it and they'll come back forever, or they hate it and never come back. But we once you get them along once, that's the main thing. They, 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 they appreciate it. Okay, and Bernie asks, how many qualified bricklayers do London Waterway Recovery Group have? Well, it depends what you mean by qualified. <laughs> we, do, we, do, we do want an exact number here. <laughs> I don't think we've got any that have actually got city and guilds and can say, I can go to an employer and say, I can lay bricks. But we certainly have a lot. We, have, we probably have 10 people who can lay bricks, certainly, certainly to a line, and probably a few less to a curve. But nearly anyone can, if you work on a, a lock chamber wall, nearly anyone can lay bricks to a line. It's just that the better people can lay them faster. Even I, even I can lay bricks, but not as fast as a good brick lad. Right, and Thomas asks, what sources, what source of funding other than fundraising? Well, as Where does the money come from? Well, as I said, we tend, to, as a travelling group, we go along to canals that are being organised, restoration that have been organised by canal societies, and the canal societies tend to do that. They, they're the ones that, when we go along, they've organised the materials, the tools, the machine, the plant, the accommodation. So most most of the work we've done is funded by canal societies, not not directly by work. It's um 
as I said earlier on, work is a, um, a subsidiary of the RWA. The RWA does get money, for, especially through legacies, but that money tends to get funded, goes into canal societies, which then trickles down to us. But we're not, fun, we're not big fundraisers in our own right. Right. Um, it, um, Thomas also asks, is there much public support? I think so. Yes. Yeah. We, we, we especially um, we, we're, we're working in um, busier places like the Thames, like we're working on the uh, Stroud Water going through Stroud Town. So it's very, very rare that someone will be walking along and says, "I don't want this canal. What are you doing?" Then nearly everybody is in support. It's you know, in 35 years of digging, I can probably think of two or three occasions where people come along and say, you shouldn't be, you know, this, we don't want this. It's 99.9% it's .9 of people are, are, are fully behind us. Right. Any more questions? I think probably got time for one or two more. So just wait for them to uh, pop up. Uh, yes, we've got two more. I oh, know. Oops. Uh, <laughs> No, we've answered those two. Yeah. Uh, anyone else got a question or shall we end it there? We've got a question from Michael there, I don't know, notice. But, um, oh, yes. But he's nearly 70. Oh, sorry, uh, Michael's a very old friend from many years ago and uh, it's a shame we haven't seen him from a long time. There, there's, there's always work for somebody. There's... Do, 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 can I just read out the question to him yeah, because sorry, I, other on. people yeah. won't necessarily have seen it. Michael says, uh, he used to be a regular back in the 1980s and then work took me away. He's now retired, uh, but nearly 70. So is there anything useful that I could do on a future dig? So he's saying, is, is, there, is there a, a, a job for an old dog? What, what, we, what we always say, <laughs> we've, we've had many people in the 70s on digs. We don't expect you to work to exhaustion. We, when, we, when you come on a dig, or certainly in London, we, do, we expect you to work to whatever rate you want to work at. You know, if... We don't, we don't expect a 70 year old to keep up with a 25 year old shoveling, you know, barrowing concrete or laying bricks. You just work at your rate and work. If you're, as long as you're doing what you want, we're, we're happy with that. You know, so um, the, the, there's always work, and, but you know, so we don't, we don't expect you to have to work at the same rate as everybody else. Okay, and we've got one more question here, uh, which is not really a question, it's a statement, but you might want to comment on it. Yeah. Um, Thomas says, our waterways are under threat from environmental groups because canals are conduits for invasive species. Uh, whether that's, I don't know whether you'd like to treat that as a, do you agree? It's a bit of a two-part. Two, two two as I showed earlier on with the um, nature reserve at, um, on the Montgomery, you can't go these days. You can't go blasting away at, at a, a canal and just rebuild it and say sod everybody else. It's it, a lot of the political work is done by likes of the IWA and the canal societies. And as you say, often the restoring the um, restoring the canal is the easy bit. You know, when when you get especially when you get funding now for lottery bids now, they, they they won't pay just for you to rebuild the canal. You've got to you've got to build nature reserves. You've got to build in training. You've got to, you know, environmental awareness. So it, it's it's a very much a, a big um, a, a different ball game to it probably what it was in the seventies when you just went and restored it. Now you've got to take everybody's. But it's it, it's not it's nobody's stopping us. It's just there's a lot more work. There's a lot more work goes on in the background now than it used than probably it used to be forty fifty years ago. Um, we have uh, a comment from Michael, uh, which he says is not a question, um, but he's just giving a plug to, uh, I think probably the best thing is, uh, I'll, I'll cop th th that goes into the chat, if you could like, Michael, if you'd like to uh, cut and paste that into the chat, then everyone will be able to see it. Um, okay. A uh, bit more, uh, so that's been answered. Um, and Thomas asks a question that I don't think we can understand. He just I says, any of that over there? <laughs> I don't know what that means. So if you'd like to type that in a bit more detail, Thomas, we might be able to answer it. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we're pretty well there. Well, I, think, I think so. 
hope people have enjoyed it and it, it, hopefully it'll encourage people to come out and make it um, again or a bit more it's uh we're, we always we're, we're a very welcoming group we don't turn any well we don't turn anybody away it's, uh, and uh, i just as, as i've said before to michael don't be don't think that we're going to work you to death because we just want you to we want you to come along have a good time put something put something into the waterway and get something out of it uh, finish the office well. okay well i think perhaps we've reached the end of the yeah. questions there uh just like to say thank you to tim for his very interesting presentation um, and also to thank those of you who are members of the work group for all the hard graft and getting muddy and dirty on behalf of the rest of us who sit in armchairs. Um, so thank you very much, Tim, for doing the talk. And thank you, everybody who's taken part in this. We had uh, a really good turnout. It's currently 37 people participating, but in fact, there were about 45 earlier on. So that's really good. Uh, and uh, much appreciate your coming along, as it were, electronically to, uh, to watch the presentation. Um, we'll be doing these talks uh, on the first Thursday of the month. Uh, the next one will most probably be Roger Squares, who is probably well known to many of you. Uh, we haven't got a topic yet, but it will be announced on our website uh, fairly soon. Uh, August, we don't normally have a talk, but we may well have one this year uh, because there won't be a towpath walk, which is the normal thing in August. So do keep uh, checking our what's on page for uh, these monthly talks and, and possibly other online events as well. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Tim, and good night.